Hi, this is Alfauzia Nihar from At Home Tuition. Welcome to our session today. The topic that we are going to discuss in our today's video is inverse of absolute value function. There are generally three ways to find the inverse of a function. One is by mapping the order of function and second is algebraically, third one is graphically. Now let us see how to find the inverse of an absolute value function. An absolute value function, I mean without domain restriction, has an inverse but that is not a function. That is why by default an absolute value function does not have an inverse function. We will discuss few examples and we can make sure that. In order to guarantee that the inverse must also be a function, we need to restrict the domain of the absolute value function so that it passes the horizontal line test which implies that it is a one-to-one -one function. As we all know, only a function which is one-to-one -one can be uh, that has inverse. Okay, let's uh, take a look at some examples so that you'll have a good idea about that. Here is the first example. I'm sure that you're familiar with the graph of an absolute value function. It will generally resemble a V-shape without any restriction to its domain, the graph of f of x equal to modulus of x that is the absolute value of x would fail the horizontal line test because a horizontal line will intersect at it uh, more than once. So if it touches the graph more than once, then it fails the horizontal line test. Am I right? If it fails, the function cannot be a one-to-one. -one. Then obviously, it may not have an inverse function. So, there is no reason for moving forward to find its inverse algebraically because we already know that inverses is not a function. Okay, first let me show you the graph for this one. As I already told you, the graph will look like a V-shaped one. If I draw a horizontal line, did you notice that it meets the graph more than once? So, this fails the horizontal line test. So, obviously this cannot be a one-to-one. -one. So, it does not have an inverse. I can also explain you the same concept algebraically. So, what is the general solution of f of x equal to absolute value of x? Let me rewrite f of x as y. y equal to modulus of x. Modulus of x can be written as plus or minus x. Am I right? So, if I replace, swap it, I'll get x is equal to plus or minus y and it can be written as again y equal to plus or minus x if i replace y as f inverse of x or absolute value you'll get two values plus or minus x am i right where plus or minus sign represents the symbol since the range of the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to zero the domain of the inverse function is likewise x is greater than or equal to zero this of course is not a function since for each positive x we get two values for y. So if you restrict the domain of the absolute value function to x greater than or equal to 0 to make it 1 to 1 the function becomes just absolute value of x is equal to x and its own inverse. If you instead restricted the domain to x less than or equal to 0 what will happen? then absolute value of x will be equal to negative x and here in this time the inverse is absolute value of x is equal to negative x with a different domain x is greater than or equal to 0 this reflects the facts the fact that modulus of x i mean absolute value of x can be defined piecewise as please note that either of the piece has an inverse so the graph will look like this direction v and this week okay you can find the inverse only if you define the function as in piecewise otherwise this has no inverse at all does this make sense to you so far okay let me take an another example and explain you here is the second example if you are going to graph this absolute value function without any restriction to its domain it will look like this let me draw the graph it is just from the parent function modulus of x. Now we are just adding 2 here. So it will be shifted 2 units to the left. So you can just follow the same graph that we followed in the previous example. I am just going to shift it 2 units to the left. 
Please look at this graph. However, if we apply the restriction x is less than or equal to negative 2, the graph of f of x modulus of x plus 2 has been modified to just the left half of the original function. Am I right? The left half of f of x equal to x plus 2 can be expressed as the line. I'll just write it on the board. Can you follow so far? So this is the left half f of x is equal to negative x plus 2 and the right half is f of x is equal to positive x plus 2. Okay. So therefore to find the inverse of f of x equal to modulus of x plus 2 for x less than or equal to negative 2 is same as finding the inverse of this side the left half f of x is equal to negative x plus 2 for x less than or equal to negative 2. Obviously this is a new function will have an inverse because it passes the horizontal line test. If you consider only this left half and draw a horizontal line, it will touch the graph at only one point, not more than once. Am I right? So this will obviously clear the horizontal line test and we can prove that this is a one to one function. I mean the only left half, this negative x plus 2. So let's now apply the basic procedure. How do we find the inverse of a function algebraically? We just replace f of x by y. If you replace this by y, now we need to swap the roles of x and y. Then we are going to solve for y to get the inverse. Just replace all x and y. I mean I'm just going to swap it. Multiply both these sides of the equation by negative 1 so that you can get rid of this negative sign. Subtract negative 2 from both these sides so that you can isolate y on the one side of the equation. All you have to do is replace y by f inverse of x. Okay, so we have found the inverse function. However, don't forget to include the domain of the inverse function as the part of your final answer. Because we are just considering the left half and doing the work. So the domain of the inverse function is the range of the original function. Am I right? So if you refer the graph again, you can see that. Please refer the graph. Now we can look at the domain and range. See range of the given function is y is greater than or equal to 0. So that means our final answer should be f inverse of x equal to negative x negative 2 for x greater than or equal to 0. Finding the absolute for the other functions are slightly different from absolute value because it is very unique. You cannot directly find the inverse function because actually it doesn't have an inverse function. So you have to restrict the domain and follow the rules strictly. Okay, let me show one more example and explain you. I'm going to take a little bit difficult level example. As a first step, whenever you get an absolute function, please graph the function. So the first step here is to graph the function. Notice that the restriction in the domain divides the absolute function into two halves. So this is the general step. First graph it and divide the function into two halves. Here is the graph. So generally for absolute value, we'll be getting V-shaped graph. I'm uh, showing separately for the positive and negative. In the previous problem, the domain is restricted less than or equal to. So we concentrated on the left half. Here it is greater than or equal to. So we are going to concentrate only on the right half of the figure. So for x greater than or equal to 3, we are interested in the right half of the absolute value function. So what is the right half? A positive x minus 3 plus 2. On the left, we have a negative sign. Please make sure that you consider the right side. Okay. So therefore, to find the inverse of this, f of x equal to modulus of x minus 3 plus 2 for x is greater than or equal to 3 is the same as finding the inverse of the line f of x equal to x minus 3 plus 2 for x greater than or equal to 3. So you also need to observe the range of the given function which is y equal to greater than or equal to 2 because this will be the domain of the inverse function. Okay, now let us solve the inverse of the function algebraically as we generally do. Replace f of x by y. We are just considering only the right half of the graph. Swap the roles of x and y. That is, I am going to switch x and y. Subtract 2 from both these sides so that you can get rid of 2 from the right side of the equation. So I'll get x minus 2, y minus 3. Now add 3 on both these sides so that you will get x plus 1 equal to y. 
okay now you have to replace y by f inverse of x so this should be our inverse for this one I'm just going to swap the sides as I mentioned in the previous example we have to mention the dominant range in your answer for sure since the range of the original function is y greater than or equal to 2 the domain of the inverse function must be x greater than or equal to 2 so that means our final answer is f inverse of x is equal to x plus 1 for x greater than or equal to 2 am I right finding the inverse of an absolute value function is not possible because it does not has an, have any inverse but when the restriction when you have some restriction for domain then you can find the absolute value function I mean the inverse of the absolute value function first you have to graph it and look for the restriction and uh, prefer the whether you have to prefer the left half or right half in case if your graph is from the uh, first quadrant and fourth quadrant you have to look at which part either you have to look for the top or the bottom so it purely depends upon the questions that you're getting it is you have to find the inverse of the absolute value function by considering the one half of the graph by restricting the domain and when you're writing the answer please make sure that you also write down the domain that's it for this so hope you're clear with finding the inverse of an absolute value function in case if you have any query please let me know see you in the next video have a great time ahead Thank